Elijah by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. In that good old Hebrew soul sublime, the spirit of the wilderness had passed. For where the thunders of imperial storm rolled over mighty hills, and where the caves of cloud capped Horeb rang with hurricane, and where wild featured solitude did hold supreme dominion, there the prophet saw and heard and felt that large mysterious life which lies remote from cities in the woods and rocks and waters of the mountained earth and so it came to pass elijah caught that scholarship which gave him power to see and solve the deep divinity that lies with nature under lordly forest domes and by the seas and so his spirit waxed made strong and perfect by its fellowship with god's authentic world until his eyes became a splendor and his face was a glory with the vision of the seer thereafter thundering in the towns of men his voice a trumpet of the lord did shake all evil to its deep foundations he the hairy man who ran before the king like some wild spectre fleeting through the storm what time jezreel's walls were smitten hard by fourfold wind and rain twas he who slew the liars at the altars of the gods and at the very threshold of a throne heaped curses on its impious lord twas he jehovah raised to grapple sin that stalked arrayed about with the kingship and to strike through gold and purple to the heart of it and therefore falsehood quaked before his face and tyranny grew dumb at sight of him and lust and murder raged abroad no more but where these were he walked a shining sun of truth and cleared and sanctified the land not always was the dreaded tishbite stern the scourge of despots when he saw the face of love and sorrow by the bed of death grew tender as a maid and she who missed a little mouth that used to catch and cling a small sweet trouble at her yearning breast yea she of zarephath who sat and mourned the silence of a bird-like voice that made her flutter with the joy of motherhood in other days she came to know the heart of pity that the rugged prophet had and when he took the soft still child away and laid it on his bed and in the dark sent up a pleading voice to heaven and drew the little body to his breast and held it there until the bright young soul returned to earth again the gladdened woman saw a radiant beauty in elijah's eyes and knew the stranger was a man of god we want a new elijah in these days a mighty spirit clad in shining arms of truth yea one whose lifted voice would break like thunder on our modern apathy and shake the fanes of falsehood from their domes down to the firm foundations one whose words directly coming from a source divine would fall like flame where vice holds festival and search the inmost hearts of nations one made godlike with that scholarship supreme which comes of suffering one with eyes to see the very core of things with hands to grasp high opportunities and use them for his glorious mission one whose face inspired would wear a terror for the lying soul but seem a glory in the sight of those who make the light and sweetness of the world and are the high priests of the beautiful yea one like this we want amongst us now to drive away the evil fogs that choke our social atmosphere and leave it clear and pure and hallowed with authentic light end of poem this recording is in the public domain manasseh by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Manasseh, Lord of Judah, and the son of him who, favored of Jehovah, saw at midnight when the skies were flushed with fire the splendid mystery of the shining air that flamed above the black Assyrian camps and breathed upon the evil hosts at rest and shed swift violent sleep into their eyes. Manasseh, Lord of Judah, when he came to fortify himself upon his throne and saw great strength was gathered unto him let slip satanic passions he had nursed for years and years and lo the land that he who thundered on the oriental mount girt round with awful light 
had set apart for Jacob's seed, the land that Moses strained on Nebo's topmost cone to see, grew black beneath the shadow of despotic sin that stalked on footways dashed with human blood, and mocked high heaven by audacious fires, and as when storm that voice of God is loud within the mountain Syrian wilderness, there flits a wailing through the wilted pines, so in the city of the wicked king a voice like abel's crying from the ground made sorrow of the broken evening winds and darkness of the fair young morning lights and silence in the homes of hunted men but in a time when grey-winged autumn fogs shut off the sun from carmel's seaward side and fitful gusts did speak within the trees of rain beyond the waters while the priests of hinnon's echoing valley offered up unhallowed sacrifices unto gods of brass and stone there came a trumpet's voice along the bald bleak northern flats and then a harnessed horseman riding furiously dashed down the ridge with an exceeding cry of esarhaddon esarhaddon haste away ye elders lo the swarthy foe six leagues from hence hath made the land a fire and all the dwellers of the hollowed hills are flying hitherwards before a flame of fifty thousand swords at this the men of baal turned about set face and fled towards the thickets where the impious king ringed about by grey gaunt wizards with the brand of belial on their features cowered low and hid himself amongst the tangled thorns and shivered in a bitter sea-borne wind and caught the whiteness of a deathly fear there where the ash-pale forest leaves were touched by morning's shining fingers and the inland depths sent out rain-plenished voices west and south the steel-clad scouts of escaradan came and searched and found manasseh whom they bound and dragged before the swart assyrian king and esarhaddon scourge of heaven sent to strange evil at its chiefest fanes and so fulfill a dread divine decree took judah's despot fettered hand and foot and cast him bleeding on a dungeon floor hard by where swift euphrates chafes his brink and gleams from cataract to cataract and gives the gale a deep midwinter tone so fared manasseh for the sins which brought pale featured desolation to the tents of alienated judah but one night when ninety moons of wild unrest had passed the humbled son of hezekiah turned himself towards the wall and prayed and wept and in an awful darkness face to face with god he said i know o lord of hosts that thou art wise and just and kind and i am shapen in iniquity but by the years of black captivity whose days and nights have marked my spirit passing through fierce furnaces of suffering and seeing it groping in blind shadows with a hope to reach thy hand by these o father these that brought the swift sad silver to my head which should have come with age which came with pain i pray thee hear these supplications now and stoop and lift me from my low estate and lend me this once my dominionship so i may strive to live the bad past down and lead henceforth a white and wholesome life and be thy contrite servant lord indeed the prayer was not in vain for while the storm sang high above the dim chaldean domes while in the pines the spirit of the rain sobbed fitfully jehovah's angel came and made a splendor of the dungeon walls and smote the bars and led manasseh forth and caught him up nor set him down again until the turrets of jerusalem sprang white before the flying travellers against the congregated morning hills and he the broken man made whole again was faithful to his promise every day thereafter passing bore upon its wings some shining record of his faultless life some brightness of a high resolve fulfilled and in good time when all the land had rest he found that he had lived the bad past down and gave god praise and with his father slept thus ends the story of manasseh if this verse should catch the eyes of one whose sin lies heavy on his soul who finds himself a shame-faced alien when he walks abroad a moping shadow when he sits at home 
who has no human friends who day by day is smitten down by icy level looks from that cold virtue which is merciless because it knoweth not what wrestling with a fierce temptation means if such a one should read my tale of hezekiah's son let him take heart and gather up his strength and step above man's scorn and find his way by paths of fire as brave manasseh did up to the white heights of a blameless life and it will come to pass that in the face of gray old enmities whose partial eyes are blind to reformation he will taste a sweetness in his thoughts and live his time arrayed with the efficient armor of that noble power which grows of self-respect and makes a man a pillar in the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain caroline chisholm by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by sandra caroline chisholm a perfect woman nobly planned to warn to comfort and command the priests and the levites went forth to feast at the courts of the kings they were vain of their greatness and worth and gladdened with glittering things they were fair in the favour of gold and they walked on with delicate feet where famished and faint with the cold the women fell down in the street the priests and the levites looked round all vexed and perplexed at the cries of the maiden who crouched to the ground with the madness of want in her eyes and they muttered few praises are earned when good has been wrought in the dark while the backs of the people are turned we choose not to loiter or hark moreover they said it is fair that our deeds in the daylight should shine if we feasted you who would declare that we gave you our honey and wine they gathered up garments of gold and they stepped with their delicate feet and the women who famished with cold were left with the snow in the street the winds and the rains were abroad the homeless looked vainly for arms and they prayed in the dark to the lord with agony clenched in their palms there is none of us left that is whole they cried through their faltering breath we are clothed with the sickness of soul and the shape of the shadow of death he heard them and turned to the earth i am pained said the lord at the woe of my children so smitten with dearth but the night of their trouble shall go he called on his chosen to come she listened and hastened to rise and he charged her to build them a home where the tears should be dried from their eyes god's servant came forth from the south she told of a plentiful land and wisdom was set in her mouth and strength in the thews of her hand she lifted them out of their fear and they thought her their moses and said we shall follow you sister from here to the country of sunshine and bread she fed them and led them away through tempest and tropical heat till they reached the far regions of day and sweet-scented spaces of wheat she hath made them a home with her hand and they bloom like the summery vines for they eat of the fat of the land and drink of its glittering wines end of poem this recording is in the public domain mount erebus by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by phil Schampf. a fragment a mighty theatre of snow and fire girt with perpetual winter and sublime by reason of that lordly solitude which dwells for ever at the world's white ends and in that weird faced wilderness of ice there is no human foot nor any paw or hoof of beast but where the shrill winds drive the famished birds of storm across the tracks whose centre is the dim mysterious pole beyond yea far beyond the homes of man by water never dark with coming ships near seas that know not feather scale or fin the grand volcano like a weird isaiah set in that utmost region of the earth doth thunder forth the awful utterance whose syllables are flame and when the fierce arctic night doth hold dominionship within her fastnesses then round the cone of erebus a crown of tenfold light appears 
and shafts of marvellous splendour shoot far out to east and west and south and north whereat a gorgeous dome of glory roofs wild leagues of mountain and transfigured waves and lends all things a beauty terrible far-reaching lands whereon the hand of change hath never rested since the world began lie here in fearful fellowship with cold and rain and tempest here colossal horns of hills start up and take the polar fogs shot through with flying stars of fire and here above the dead gray crescents topped with spires of thunder smoke one half the heaven flames with that supremest light whose glittering life is yet a marvel unto all but one the entity almighty whom we feel is nearest us when we are face to face with nature's features aboriginal and in the hearing of her primal speech and in the thraldom of her primal power while like the old chaldean king who waxed insane with pride we humans grow to think we are the mightiest of the world and lords of all terrestrial things behold the sea rolls in with a superb disdain upon our peopled shores omnipotent and while we set up things of clay and call our idols gods and while we boast or fume about the petty honours or the poor pale disappointments of our meagre lives lo changed us as eternity itself the grand arctic mountain looms outside all breeding life and with its awful speech is an emblem of the power supreme whose thunders shake the boundless universe whose lightnings make a terror of all space end of poem this recording is in the public domain our jack by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c twelve years ago our jack was lost all night twelve years ago the spirit of the storm sobbed round our camp a wind of northern hills that hold a cold companionship with clouds came down and wrestled like a giant with the iron-featured woods and fall and ford the night our jack was lost sent forth a cry of baffled waters where the murray sucked the rain replenished torrents at his source and gathered strength and started for the sea we took our jack from melbourne just two weeks before this day twelve years ago he left a home where love upon the threshold paused and wept across the shoulder of the lad and blessed us when we said we'd take good care to keep the idol of the house from harm we were a band of three we started thence to look for watered lands and pastures new with faces set towards the down beyond where cool monero's topmost mountain breaks the wings of many a seaward going storm and shapes them into wreaths of subtle fire we were i say a band of three in all with brother tom for leader bright-eyed jack who thought himself as big a man as tom was self-elected second in command and i was cook and groom a week slipped by brimful of life of health and happiness for though our progress northward had been slow because the country on the track was rough no one amongst us let his spirits flag moreover being young and at the stage when all things novel wear a fine romance we found in ridge and glen and wood and rock and waterfall and everything that dwells outside with nature pleasure of that kind which only lives for those whose hearts are tired of noisy cities and are fain to feel the peace and power of the mighty hills the second week we cross the upper fork where murray meets a river from the east 
and there one evening dark with coming storm we camped a furlong from the bank our jack the little man that used to sing and shout and start the merry echoes of the cliffs and gravely helped me to put up the tent and try a thousand tricks and offices that made me scold and laugh by turns the pet of sisters and the youngest hope of one who grew years older in a single night our jack i say strayed off into the dusk lured by the noises of a waterfall and though we hunted shouting right and left the whole night long through wind and rain and searched for five days afterwards we never saw the lad again I turned to Tom and said, That wild fifth evening, which of us has heart, enough to put the saddle on our swiftest horse, and post away to Melbourne there to meet, and tell his mother we have lost her son, or which of us can bear to stand and see the white affliction of a faded face, made old by you and me, O oh, Tom, my boy, her heart will break tom moaned but did not speak a word he saddled horse and galloped off oh jack 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 when bright-haired benjamin was sent to egypt with his father's sons those rough half-brothers took more care of him than we of you but shall we never see your happy face my brave lad any more nor hear you whistling in the fields at eve nor catch you up to mischief with your knife amongst the apple trees nor find you out a truant playing on the road to school nor meet you boy in any other guise you used to take is this worn cap i hold the only thing you've left us of yourself are we to sit from night to night deceived through rainy seasons by presentiments that make us start at shadows on the pane and fancy that we hear you in the dark and wonder that your step has grown so slow and listen for your hand upon the door end of poem this reading is in the public domain Camped by the Creek by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. All day a strong sun has been drinking The ponds in the wattle tree glen And now as their puddles I am thinking We were wise to head hitherwards men The country is heavy to nord but lord how you rattled along jack's chestnut best leg was put forward and the bay from the start galloped strong but for bottom i stake my existence there's none of the lot like the mare for look she has come the whole distance with never the turn of a hair but now let us stop for the supper will want us to-morrow by noon and as he can swear like a trooper we can't be a minute too soon here dick you can hobble the filly and chestnut but don't take a week and jack hurry off with the billy and fillet will camp by the creek so spoke the old stockman and quickly we made ourselves snug for the night the smoke grease above us curled thickly for our pipes were the first thing alight as we sat round a fire that only a well-seasoned bushman can make for our forest grew silent and lonely though the paw was a steer in the brake but not till our supper was ended and not till old bill was asleep did wild things by wonder attended 
in shot of our camping ground creep scared eyes from the thick tuff and tree hollow gleamed out through the forest bull's start and ever a hurry would follow of fugitive feet in the dark while dick and i yarned and talked over old times that had gone like the sun the wail of the desolate plover came up from the swamps in the run and sniffling our supper elated from his den the red dingo crawled out but skulked in the darkness and waited like a cunning but cowardly scout thereafter came sleep that soon falls on a man who has ridden all day and when midnight had deepened the pause on the hills we were snoring away but ere we dozed off the wild noises of forest of fen and of stream grew strange and were one with the voices that died with a sweet semi-dream and the tones of the waterfall blended with the song of the wind on the shore became a soft psalm that ascended grew far and we heard it no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain you terp by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c e canada set to music by c e horsley and sung at the opening of the melbourne town hall eighteen seventy argument hail to thee sound the power of euterp in all the scenes of life in religion in works of charity in soothing troubles by means of music in all humane and high purposes in war in grief in the social circle the children's lullaby the dance the ballad in conviviality when far from home at evening the whole ending with an allegorical chorus rejoicing at the building of a mighty hall erected for the recreation of a nation destined to take no inconsiderable part in the future history of the world overture number one chorus all hail to thee sound since the time calliope's son took the lyre and lulled in the heart of their clime the demons of darkness and fire since eurydice's lover brought tears to the eyes of the prince of night thou hast been through the world's weary years a marvellous source of delight yea a marvellous source of delight in the wind in the wave in the fall of the water each note of thine dwells but euterp hath gathered from all the sweetest to weave into spells she makes a miraculous power of thee with her magical skill and gives us for bounty or dower the accents that soothe us or thrill yea the accents that soothe us or thrill all hail to thee sound let us thank the great giver of light and of life for the music divine that we've drank in seasons of peace and of strife let us gratefully think of the balm that falls on humanity tired at the tones of the song or the psalm from lips and from fingers inspired yea from lips and from fingers inspired number two quartet and chorus when in her secret fanes god's daughter sweet religion prays your tops holier strains her thoughts from earth to heaven raise the organ notes sublime put every 
worldly dream to flight they sanctify the time and fill the place with hallowed light number three soprano solo yea and when that meek-eyed maiden men call charity comes fain to raise up spirits laden with bleak poverty and pain often in her cause enlisted music softens hearts like stones and the fallen are assisted through interps wondrous tones number four orchestral intermezzo number five chorus beautiful is sound devoted to all ends humane and high and its sweetness never floated like a thing unheeded by power it has on souls encrusted with the selfishness of years yea and thousands mammon rusted hear it feel it leave in tears number six choral recitative men's voices only when on the battlefield and in the sight of tens of thousands bent to smite and slay their human brothers how the soldier's heart must leap at sounds of martial music fired with all that spirit that the patriot loves who seeks to win or nobly fall for home number seven triumphal march number eight funeral chorus slowly and mournfully moves a procession wearing the signs of sorrow through loss and it halts like a shadow of death in the pines come from the fane that is filled with god's presence sad sounds and deep holy euterp she sings of our brother we listen and weep death like the angel that passed over egypt struck at us sore never again shall we turn at our loved one's step at the door number nine chorus soprano voices only but passing from sorrow the spirit of music a glory doth rove where it licens the features of beauty and burns through the accents of love the passionate accents of love number ten lullaby song contra alto the night shades gather and the sea sends up a sound sonorous deep the plover's wail comes down the lee by slope and vale the vapors weep and dew is on the tree and now where homesteads be the children fall asleep asleep a low-voiced wind amongst the leaves the sighing leaves that mourn the spring like some lone spirit flits and grieves and grieves and flits on fitful wing but where song is a guest a lulling dreamy thing the children fall to rest to rest number eleven waltz chorus when the summer moon is beaming on the stirless waters dreaming and the keen gray summits gleaming through a silver starry haze in our homes to strains entrancing to the steps the quickly glancing steps of youths and maidens dancing maidens light of foot as fays then the waltz whose rhythmic paces make melodious happy places brings a brightness to young faces brings a sweetness to the eyes sounds that move us like enthralling accents where the runnel falling sends out flute-like voices calling where the sweet wild moss bed lies number twelve ballad tenor when twilight 
guides with ghostly tread across the western heights and in the east the hills are red with sunset's fading lights then music floats from cot and hall where social circles met by sweet euterp held in thrall their daily cares forgot what joy it is to watch the shine that hollows beauty's face when women sings the strains divine whose passion floods the place then how the thoughts and feelings rove at song's inspiring breath in homes made beautiful by love or sanctified by death what visions come what dreams arise what eden's youth will limb when leaning over her whose eyes has sweetened life for him for while she sings and while she plays and while her voice is low his fancy paints diviner days than any we can know number thirteen drinking song men's voices only but hurrah for the table that heavily groans with the good things that keep in the life when we sing and we dance and we drink to the tones that are masculine thorough and blithe good luck to us all over walnuts and wine we hear the rare songs that we know are as brimful of mirth as the spring is of shine and as healthy and hearty we trow then our glasses we charge to the ring of the stave that the flush to our faces doth send for though life is a thing that winds up with the grave we'll be jolly my boys to the end hurrah hurrah yes jolly my boys to the end number fourteen recitative bass when far from friends and home and all things that bind a man to life how dear to him is any old familiar sound that takes him back to spots where love and hope in past days used to wander hand in hand across high flowered meadows and the paths whose borders shared the beauty of the spring and borrowed splendor from autumnal suns number fifteen chorus the voices accompanied only by the violins playing home sweet home then at sea or in wild wood then ashore or afloat all the scenes of his childhood come back at a note at the turn of a ballad at the tones of a song cometh memory pallid and speechless so long and she points with her finger to phantom-like ears and loveth to linger in silence in tears number sixteen solo bass in the yellow flame of evening sounds of music come and go through the noises of the river and the drifting of the snow in the yellow flames of evening at the setting of the day sounds that lighten fall and lighten flicker faint and fade away what they are behold we know not but their honey slakes and slays half the want which whitens manhood is the stress of alien days even as a wondrous woman struck with love and great desire hast thou been to us you turp half of tears and half of fire but thy joy is swift and fitful and a subtle sense of pain sighs through thy melodious breathings takes the rapture from thy strain in the yellow flame of evening sounds of music come and go 
through the noises of the river and the drifting of the snow number seventeen recitative soprano and thus it is that music manifold in fanes in passion sanctuaries or where the social feast is held is still the power that blindeth heart to heart and whether grief or love or pleasure form the link we know tis still a bond that makes humanity that wearied entity a single whole and soothes the trouble of the heart bereaved and lulls the beatings in the breast that yearns and gives more gladness to the gladdest things number eighteen finale chorus now a vision comes o brothers blended with supremest sounds of harmony comes and shows a temple stately splendid in a radiant city by the sea founders fathers of a mighty nation raised the walls and built the royal dome gleaming now from lofty lordy station like a dream of athens or of rome and a splendor of sound a thunder of song roll sea-like around come sea-like along the ringing and ringing and ringing of voices of choristers singing inspired by a national joy strike through the marvelous hall fly by the aisle and the wall while the organ notes roam from basement to dome now low as a wail now loud as a gale and as grand as the music that builded old troy end of poem this recording is in the public domain sedan by henry kendall read for librivox dot org by ribbon witter another battle and the sounds have rolled by many a gloomy gorge and wasted plain over huddled hills and mountains manifold like winds that run before a heavy rain when autumn laps the leaves and drooping grain and earth lies deep in brown and cloudy gold my brothers lo our grand old england stands with weapons gleaming in her ready hands outside the tumult let us watch and trust that she will never darken in the dust and drift of wild contention but remain the hope and stay of many troubled lands where so she waits the issue of the fight aloof but praying god defend the right end of early poems by henry kendall